It's been around five years minimum for a lot of these songs being released. Some of them are like seven years old. And so coming back into it, I just wanted to give these songs new life in the context of having all of this new access, whether it's vocabulary or connections to producers and studio spaces like Tiny Telephone, to just give the dreams I had when I was a teenager an opportunity to make their way into the music that I'm releasing. It was hugely important for me to come back to the Bay Area to do these songs because that's where they were written. It's where I'm from. I'm from Oakland. I'm very proud of it. And Tiny is a huge staple of the music community and specifically the recording spaces that you know Bay Area artists use. Their focus on analog is really cool too. I think for a lot of these songs, they were written obviously when I was a little teenager and recorded in my bedroom in like the middle of the night. And so analog feels like it has its a warmth that I think those songs naturally find themselves in. And it also just adds such like a level of uniqueness to every single track that you're getting, whether it's just like a straight up ukulele cut or if you're doing a vocal, there's just a little more, yes, uniqueness to everything that you end up capturing. I've never met Meryl in person until we started working here at Tiny. My next thing is I think we should do a big frame drum just every now and again on the downbeats. Do you want to do that? Sure. Cool. Because maybe we'll we'll just do a different, we'll just use the room reverb or like a slightly less intense yeah. one here. Cool. Cool. We had worked previously on my EP Dusk and that was all done remotely because of the pandemic. So it was just Zoom calls and emails and texts. And yeah, it was crazy, but it feels like I've known her for so long. And I technically have, it's been years since meeting her for the first time virtually, but really, really cool to finally do that in person. <laughs> One more time. So we've played like a big drum in the past couple days. I told Meryl I'd literally never touched a drum before in five years of working in studios and recording music. I played some books, which surprisingly I have done before. A gentle slapping of the books. <laughs> But it's super fun because that was what I did when I was recording music in my room when I was 17. I just picked up whatever I had available. I'm pretty sure I used a trash can as like a bass drum at one point. And I played piano, which was, I've played like two months of piano lessons, but just to like mess around with that. And then I've learned how to use some of the synths with Miriam and Meryl and like, I've never touched a synth before. A couple of these songs that I've written are about like romantic relationships which I had never been in one at the point of like writing a lot of them, especially The Idea of You. In The Idea of You, there's a line that says like, you would never say, I love you too. And I'm like, I never even said I love you to like any person that I was dating or had a crush on. So it's just funny, like coming back into it now having experience of being in like long-term relationships with another person and knowing what it's like to like fall in love with someone. But like, that song is so real. Like I listen to it and I'm like, that is so true. Like I still, I think as a person, romanticize a lot of aspects of my life and you forget like the true emotions that lie at the core of whatever you're doing. I wrote Stuck when I was still in the closet. Guy after guy, crush after crush. Oh, I forgot I was still in the closet when I wrote this. All right, okay. Um, is that fun if we change the lyrics? Girl after guy, crush after crush, never really figured it out with someone. I think a couple songs actually have changed in the context of like how I've become more comfortable in my identity, specifically my sexuality, over the course of getting a little bit older. And Stuck was one that I wrote when I was not out to anybody yet for being bisexual. And so it's really cool to go back into it now, having been out for the last six years. and singing a song that was written from a place of not feeling comfortable talking about myself and not feeling comfortable reaching out to people. So it's cool to just have that increased confidence and in singing it and being like, I'm so proud of how far I've come from that point. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people look at their teenager self and version of who they were and look at it with a lot of shame and like embarrassment over the things that they did or said or what they were interested in. There's a lot of power in claiming who you were and not being afraid of that version of yourself because, I don't know, my teenage self was cringy and embarrassing and awkward, but also so cool and had so many big ideas and so many different dreams. And 
As you get older, I think it's very easy to tell yourself that you need to grow past them and move beyond them and, you know, be more adult or whatever it is. But there's so much truth in paying attention to the voice and the version of yourself that you were when you were younger. And I hope that, you know, my audience and any person in the world can hold empathy for the person that they were and know that the dreams and goals that you had when you were a teenager are still worthy things to think about. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Yay!